As the summer anime stragglers finish airing, the fall season for 2023 is about to start. As I went about creating my tier list, two things jump out at me for fall. First off, it seems like there are even more anime this season than the last one by a pretty significant amount. Fall is going to be the season of fantasy, not just isekai either. Of course, it won't just be limited to the fantasy genre for everyone to watch. Just scrolling through the list, it's fantasy one after another. With that in mind, continuing through the list, we have returning favorites that dominated previous seasons, anime that keep getting additional seasons even though no one is watching them, at least in the West, and even more importantly, another manga recommendation turned anime from Gigup. For a guy that's part of trash taste, he just don't miss. Returning viewers, you might have noticed I changed up the tiers again. I'm trying to beat the anime elitist who hates everything allegations. Instead of potential, it's now Dark Horse, and in addition to that is the Something Approved tier. This aligns a bit better with the approach to how I rate anime going into the season and hopefully comes off as less pretentious. If you're a new viewer, stick around and maybe subscribe and let me know what you think about the list in the comments. Starting off, I've gone ahead and thrown all the shows of fall that I'm going to skip into that tier. There is only so much time in the day you can dedicate to watching anime, and with 70 entries on the list, some things are just going to be an instant skip. Many of these shows seem unappealing due to low interest in them, themes or genres I don't enjoy, and finding other anime in the season of the same type more intriguing. Then there's anime I feel compelled to mention even though I won't be watching. FLCL Shoegaze is another installment of the franchise, and from what I gather, fans really hated the previous installment grunge, so I'm going to drop this into something improved since there's a lot of fans that need this anime to prove something to them. I have no interest in the racing genre, so these are a skip for me, but we have two this season with a decent level of interest. MF Ghost, an initial D spin-off with Takumi Fujiwara as a trainer for a new generation racer. Then there is Overtake, which seems to be a ragtag group trying to succeed in formula racing. The 100 Girlfriends Who Really Times 5 Love You will just be another ridiculous over-the-top harem anime with a bad story. This is also the reason why I won't be watching the second season of Girlfriend Girlfriend, which I wish I had taken my own advice on and not watched. Something else I'll be skipping the second season on is Ark Knight's Perish and Frost. When I watched the prequel, it felt like I was watching one of those cinematic compilation videos of a video game, except nothing made sense. I'm sure fans that played the game had a better grasp on the things going on, but for me it was just a solid looking fight anime with a bad story. Another type of anime I don't enjoy is in the genre superhero villain. I guess I'm just one of those people that has something wrong with them since it's one of the most popular types of movies and TV shows in the world. In fall there's Undead Unluck, which I'm expecting to be quite popular along with its more unique premise than some of the other anime in the genre, and then there's Shy. Shy seems to fall prey to many of the tropes of the genre we've seen before. Individuals with superpowers appeared from around the globe to maintain peace. They become the symbols of their respected nations, striving to limit crime and bring evildoers to justice. That was an excerpt from Shy Synopsis, which happens to be some of the tropes of the genre that I was criticizing. I've already went ahead and moved a lot of this genre into skip, but I see Paradox Live, the animation, being an anime that's popular this season. The animation looks pretty good at first glance, though I'm not sure why it has a profile badge event on Mal. Even if I did watch music anime, I went and listened to some of the group's songs, and I didn't really think they were that good and it changed my opinion to thinking that this is more of a dark horse anime. My opinion on music is kind of irrelevant anyways because I mostly just listen to trap. Two more anime I expect to be popular but gave on long ago are Tokyo Revengers, third season, and Dr. Stone New World Part 2. Two episodes of Tokyo Revengers and the first episode of Dr. Stone's second season was all I needed to stop watching them. I just couldn't stand the main character of either show. Moving on, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun is getting a four episode spin-off with After School Hanako-kun. Because it's only four episodes and the duration will be 10 minutes for each one, it doesn't feel right to put it in popular with the lack of staying power for an entire season. With how big the parent story is, I can see a world where it's big for the fans of it, but for now I'm just going to put it in skip. The Seven Deadly Sins has been an inconsistent mess of an anime since the start of Imperial Wrath of the Gods. I don't think I'm ready to subject myself to more with Four Nights of the Apocalypse, so this is just a skip. Something I need to get around to watching is The Ancient Magus Bride Season 2, so for now at least part 2 airing this season will be a skip for me. 
This is also the same thing for a movie coming out in December of Rascal Does Not Dream of a Knapsack Kid. I just can't seem to get around to watching anime movies, even of one of my favorite shows, so this will be the third one in an ever growing plan to watch list. After finally narrowing down the list to 22 anime, I'm ready to cover everything I'll be watching this season, so anything you feel I'm missing out on by not watching, let me know in the comments below. Now the true start to the tier list will be Ragna Crimza, and I'm going to be putting this in Dark Horse. I feel optimistic about what it might be able to achieve. The cover art, synopsis, and trailer all point to a high fantasy story I hope to enjoy. The thing I'm most concerned with is will the dragons look cool or be CGI nightmares? Since the express goal of the anime is to destroy dragon monarchs, I definitely hope they look good. That time I got reincarnated as a slime is getting a 3 episode over where Rimuru confronts the swirling conspiracies in the Coleus kingdom. As one of the premier isekai, Coleus' dream should have at least a decent level of interest in it. This will be going into popular but I'm not familiar enough with Ovas and Onas to know their effect on an entire season. Since both are airing this season, we will knock out Spy Family Code White and Spy Family Season 2 by dropping them right into the bangers section. I can say confidently Spy Family is a top 10 modern anime and is a great gateway. You can always expect it to get a laugh and is a fun break from the plethora of shonen packed with action sequences trying to impress us. Then there's the rising of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero Season 3. Going into detail on how much this anime pisses me off would derail us, so watch my video The Rising of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hero was a waste of potential. This anime being popular goes without saying. For me though, the third season is going to be do or die. If it can't transcend the mediocrity we've gotten previously, the only reasonable thing I can do will be stop watching it. So this is something to prove. Ron Kimono Hashi's forbidden deductions for me is also something that has a lot to prove. Mystery is one of the most difficult genres for an anime to get right outside of sci-fi and comedy. How much information can a mangaka share before nothing is left up to interpretation, or how little before the story is too confusing? This will be one of the many problems this anime will have to overcome, but I'll remain hopeful until proven otherwise. My Daughter Left the Nest and Returned in S-Ranked Adventure will likely be an average anime that I'll be subjecting myself to this season. I'll likely end up even more cynical of the genre because I can't limit myself to just quality and I end up with just a bunch of quantity for it. The vexations of a shut-in vampire princess goes into something to prove. I like vampires, but vampire anime seem to have an aversion to being quality. Like being a quality show is the equivalent to holy water. Shangri-La Frontier definitely looks like a dark horse to me. Will this be the first time an anime accurately depicts what it's like to play an MMO? I doubt any mangaka will ever do it, but Shangri-La looks like it could be a lot of fun. Earlier in the video I alluded to a recommendation Giga gave for Free Run Beyond Journey's End a year ago. You really never know if or when a manga will get an adaptation so I'm excited to see this happen sooner than later. Many of the comments went along with the video to paint a story of an old trope of fantasy. An elf watching the world change, mortals dying as the elves stayed the same. Explored by the master of fantasy Tolkien, to the greatest fantasy shared universe Dragonlance. I'm happy to finally see it explored in an anime, so this is without a doubt going into the bangers. My impression of the Apothecary Diaries at first glance was that it appears to be similar to Tongling Fei, a Chinese Ona very few people will have ever heard of, but has the greatest opening ever created. <laughs> With that said, The Apothecary Diaries is a dark horse I can see becoming a banger. In my mind, the anime The Kingdoms of Ruin is something that has a much to prove. The battle of magic versus science intrigues me, but isn't convincing enough yet to consider it more than average. Now this is a take of all time that will definitely get me into trouble. The Eminence in Shadow Season 2 is an anime with something to prove. I can already hear it now, you're a hater. The first season was popular and amazing, blah blah blah. You know the usual trash isekai defending. Gun to the back of your head, name five. What the fuck, the fuck are y'all talking? What y'all talking about, bro? Did I enjoy it and name my character in World of Warcraft Kagano? Yes, but there was a lot of issues with the story that many people overlooked because I guess hot chicks. The first season finale was strong, so I'm hoping that the second season can prove to be of similar quality. 
I'm trying my best here to deny the anime elitist allegations, but are we serious with the next anime? Goblin Slayer Season 2 is a top 3 popularity wise going into the fall season. It's been a long time since 2018. I remember it being entertaining to watch, but not that impressive of a story. Maybe it's nostalgia. I am expecting it to remain popular, so that's going to be the tier it goes into since it's already so high. But this is going to be an average anime. Something actually getting placed into the average tier is Dead Mount Death Played Part 2. I could feel the potential it had during the first season, it just doesn't feel like it can be expressed. Maybe Part 2 can pull it off and I'm wrong, but I just, I'm not seeing anything like that here. And you can just tell Berserk of Gluttony is going to be a bad anime, but I'm a glutton for fantasy. See what I did there? A little bit of wordplay, a little self-deprecating joke? The more I explain it, the funnier it gets, right? And it doesn't come off as a cry for help? Never mind, to the next anime. Protocol Rain is going to be a risky dark horse for me. The premise is interesting enough. Shun had given up on gaming, but to save the place he worked at, Shun will need to win a gaming tournament. My concern is Protocol Rain Studio is quad, so I don't know if those degenerates that did my life as Inukai-san's dog can be trusted. Then from the same studio that did Uzaki-chan comes the incredibly long named romance our dating story, the experienced you and the inexperienced me, Kimi Zero. There has to be a reason so many people are interested in it. I'm getting slightly more than a married couple but not lovers vibes, which I hope isn't the case. But by popularity vote, this will be in the popular tier. The Faraway Paladin's first season struggled to remain consistently engaging, and with the Faraway Paladin, the Lord of Rust Mountains, I'm worried for more of the same. I wish it was just that being my only concern, because I have been looking forward to more of this anime. Looking at the mouth for this, from the first season to the second, there seems to have been a pretty big internal shakeup of producers, studios, and director change. With all this against it, I'd say that Faraway Paladin has something to prove. That's the last fantasy anime this season that deserves to have time dedicated to it. We don't have to talk about bad fantasy again. Let's avoid another breakdown over the genre. So the Demon Sword Master of Excalibur Academy, bad. A playthrough of a certain dude's VR MMO life, bad. A returner's magic should be special, maybe average. With those being the last anime added, we've now completed the massive 70 entry tier list. Anyone that manages to complete a third of the anime this season, much less every single one, deserves a weeb medal. If doing these tier lists or Mal's Fantasy Leagues has taught me anything, it's just how challenging it is to guess how popular an anime will be. There's a lot I'll get right or wrong, but at the end of the day, all that matters is enjoying the anime you want to see. This has been another seasonal anime tier list, and now I need to go watch some anime. 